And uh, we'll get to that brief because I think it, it, it did come into play in this ruling. But first, can you just give people uh, the base level understanding of the practical outcome of this case? What did the court hold? Sure. Uh, the federal law, 18 United States Code, Section 922G, creates nine categories of people who can't have firearms or ammunition. One of those, uh, G8, is about people with domestic violence restraining orders. Uh, in this case, and, and G8 has two parts in it, uh, the court in this case upheld uh, part C1, which is the part that's applicable uh, to Mr. Rahimi, which is he was given a domestic violence restraining order based on a finding by a judge that he in particular, based on actual conduct, uh, posed a incredible threat uh, to a domestic partner. In this case, his uh, ex-girlfriend uh, with whom he had ha had a child. Mm -hmm. And now this was uh, this was a facial challenge, right? So th this that means that he would have had to show that the entire law was unconstitutional in all of its applications. Uh, and the court ruled that wasn't the case. And then they kind of took a step further and said, even in just the specific circumstances of Rahimi himself, even if he had brought an as applied challenge, they call it, he still would have lost. Uh, what, and why why did they determine that? Sure. So as you're saying, an as-applied challenge says that this law, there's no set of circumstances under which this law is constitutional. So if you had a law that said it is illegal to make fun of the president, then you can that would be an easy win under a facial challenge because there's, you know, <laughs> all making fun of the president is lawful. On the other hand, many cases are what's called an as-applied challenge, which says this law might be constitutional in general, but as applied to me, it's not. Rahimi didn't try an as-applied challenge uh, because, as his lawyers accurately recognized, he's the last guy who could ever win. Uh, first of all, he had uh, the opportunity to participate in a hearing. He ended up just agreeing to the uh, restraining order by consent, but he had an opportunity to appear in court and be heard. And the restraining order was based on actual evidence about uh, an altercation involving when he was having a violent fight in public with his girlfriend and then a bystander noticed and he shot a gun at the bystander. And then he told the girlfriend that if you tell anybody about this, I'll kill you. And right. that was all undisputed evidence. So he's clearly not a guy who would have any chance on, on an as-applied challenge. The court, yeah. importantly, did not rule out the possibility of as-applied challenges in other cases. Mm. Uh, you know, for example, there, well, there, there are lots of possible cases where the evidence against the individual would be much weaker uh, than in Rahimi's case, and or the parties might, a divorcing couple might have just agreed to a mutual protective order, not because they'd really ever done anything violent to each other, but it was a form they filled out. It's like, yeah, you, you both stay away from each other and don't hurt each other. Right. Yeah, because I mean, the, the finding itself is seems fairly narrow uh, in the sense that it only applies to somebody who's been um, found by a court to be a an actual genuine threat to somebody else. And and also that the um, that the order is only temporary was another aspect of their finding, too. Right. That uh, that this wasn't a permanent ban. It was only for the length of the restraining order itself, which uh, I guess they said was one to two years. Uh, so um, it, it seemed like they did leave the door open to a lot of these other kinds of challenges. Is that how you read it? Um, yes. And, and I think that's, that is overall good. There's been in the lower federal courts, some have said you can never have an as applied challenge to any of the 922 G prohibitors. And the courts certainly didn't adopt that hmm. theory. Um, so that that was positive. And importantly, the court, uh, to a degree, followed an idea that was presented only in, in the amicus brief that I wrote, which said that on G8, there's two categories in it. And Brahimi was in category C1, 
which is where you have a, a judge making factual findings about the individual, about violence, and about danger. Then C2 is also a prohibitor, but that doesn't require any factual findings. It simply requires that there was an order that says, you know, don't injure uh, or, or attack uh, this other domestic person. And my brief said C1 is fine because that's based on an individualized finding of danger, but C2 is not because there's no findings at all in it. And it was the only brief that took that approach. And notably, the court said, this is only about C1. We're not deciding anything on C2. So I think that leaves the way open for, for lots of, at least as applied challenges, certainly, uh, for people subject to C2 orders.